Hi everyone and welcome. For those of you just joining, we're going to give it another minute or so, but in the meantime, we do have a few links here. The first link is to sign up for a cloud account. And this includes both the free tier, which you can use during today's lab, and cloud child credits for additional services. And we also have the link to today's lab guide and then the live lab version as well. So I will drop all of those links in the chat now. Okay, let's get started. Welcome everyone to the Creating a Shopping Cart app with Oracle Apex Developer Lab. My name is Tara Van Cleve and I'm a marketing event manager for the developer initiative here at Oracle. Today, we're excited to show you how to quickly and easily build a shopping cart app that allows you to manage products, customers, and stores. If you do not currently have an Oracle Cloud account, we encourage you to create one now. We'll be recording today's session, so if you'd like to follow along with the lab walkthrough and then complete the lab later on at your own pace, we'll be sending the link to the recording in the next couple of days, and it will also be available on the Modern App Dev Series page, as well as the Oracle Developer YouTube channel. You'll also have the opportunity to participate in a short quiz on the material covered in today's lab. And upon completing the quiz, you'll receive a developer masterclass badge that you can share to your social media, recognizing your commitment and earned expertise. If you have any questions during the lab, please ask them in the Q&A area, and we'll have Senior Cloud Trials Representative Dan Ganey and Principal Product Manager Jason Haynes available to answer them throughout the session. Today's lab will be presented by Monica Godoy, Principal Product Manager for Database Developer Tools and Access Dev. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Monica. Thank you, Tara. All right, so welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today. My name is Monica Godoy, I'm Product Manager on the Oracle Apex team and I'll be your guide uh, for this workshop today. So as Tara said, you will create a shopping cart today using Oracle Apex. So let's get started with that. Click the link to the workshop that we are going to run today. So uh, I believe that uh, Tara already shared the link in the chat so you can go directly to the lab, all right? So let's move to the lab very quick. Okay, here is the workshop, and here you can find the introduction to the workshop, all right? So basically, what you are going to create, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, a shopping cart application that um, allows customers to review the products so they can decide when they want to buy one of the products, add the product to the shopping cart, and then they, when they wish, they can proceed to check out, okay? So let me show you the application that you are going to create at the end. So this is the final application. You will, uh, this is the, uh, the home page of the application. This is what customers are going to see, okay? So this is the first thing that going to see, the list of the products, all right? So they can navigate or scroll down to see all the products, or they can use the face of search in order to find easily the products that they want to buy, all right? So let's say um, they want to buy a coat, okay? So they can select the clothing and they can see all the items here, okay? Let's say that they want to buy uh, this uh, product, okay? They can see the name of the product, the brand, the description and the price. Also, they can read the customer reviews, okay? They can decide the items that they want to purchase for this product. And then they hit, they can hit on add to cart to add the product to the shopping cart. So customers can see the message that the product was added to the cart, and then they can navigate to the shopping cart to see the details. So at this point, customers can edit the shopping cart. Okay, so they can come back to the product and say, for example, I prefer to remove these products from the cart, or you know what, 
I prefer to add another item for this product. So they can update the quantity for the product, okay? And at any time they can clear the shopping cart or they can proceed to check out. So they can enter the information, the email address, the name and the store, and they can proceed to check out. So let's do that. And they can see the details of the order, the ID of the order, the status on the total. Okay. So at any time they can come back to the shop and see if they want to buy other things or uh, just review the products. Okay. So this is um, the options for the customers, but there are other options for administrators. So let's see that. So we need to enter the password. This requires uh, credentials. Oh, okay. So this is the administration pages and the administrators can run a dashboard to identify the top 10 products, the top five stores, the status of the orders, and also they can see the reviews from the customers. There are other pages to maintain the data. For example, the customers, uh, they can review the details for uh, the reviews. Okay, so they can see the rating and the, uh, the comments from the customers. And also they can go to uh, manage products so they can maintain uh, the products, they can add uh, a new product or they can update the information, okay? So they can use um, this page to upload, a, for example, a product image or they need to uh, define a different color for the product, the department, or the type of clothing. Okay, so this is the page that you are going to create today. So let's go back to the workshop and let me show you uh, the labs that are included in this workshop. So this uh, workshop includes nine labs, okay? And um, probably we are not going to finish the workshop today, but you can do it at your own pace later after this session. And the dynamic that we are going to run today is that I'm going to demonstrate how to do the steps, how to run the lab, and then I will give you time so you can follow the steps. If you prefer to skip all of these steps and just run the application right away, so you can go to the download section, download the application, and in order to run the application, you need to run the first three steps, okay? The, you need to install a sample data set, add the columns to the product table, and create the database objects. That's all, and you can import the application. Also, you can find uh, the images to upload uh, for the products that we are going to have in this application. Okay, so you can download sample, sample images that you can upload to the products. And if you are new using Oracle Apex, uh, you can find more information about Apex in the learn more uh, section. So you can learn more about the app builder, the base designer, the shared components, the CAF region and the Apex collection API. Okay. So <clears throat> the first thing that we need to do in order to run this workshop is to sign up for an Apex workspace. In order to run this workshop, we need Apex 21.1, okay? So let me show you the options that you have to run this workshop. You can use Oracle Apex service or Oracle Autonomous Database or apex.oracle.com. We will use the first option, which is Oracle Apex Application Development Service or also known as Apex service. Okay, so let's do that. 
And I'm going to go to my Oracle Cloud environment. Okay, so if you are in your Oracle Cloud, uh, Oracle Cloud instance, go next to the Oracle icon, you can find the hamburger menu. So click on that and navigate to developer services. Click on Apex instances. Okay, and make sure that you have selected a compartment here. Okay, so click on create Apex service. And we need to provide some basic information in order to create this Apex service. So for the display name, I will enter the name, for example, workshop to identify uh, this um, service. And uh, for the configuration, I recommend you to enable the always free option. So in that way, you can use the, this service for unlimited time. So you will get one CPU and 20 gigas for storage. And then we need to enter the administrator credentials. Uh, by default, the username is admin. So we need to enter the password, confirm the password and scroll down and you will find the create Apex service button. So click on that. And your service it will, uh, will be available in uh, some minutes, probably two or three minutes, all right? So in the meantime, I'm going to go back to my slides and uh, I'm going to talk about Oracle Apex. Oracle Apex is a low code application development platform for enterprise applications that is part of every Oracle database. It enables you to easy, easily and quickly build a beautiful, scalable and secure applications that look great on a desktop, on a smartphone or on a tablet. And you don't need to be an expert in a bus race technologies or, uh, you know, or, or languages in order to create your applications. So you can create this application that I just show you can run on any device, on a smartphone or on a tablet, okay? So Apex is extraordinarily good at building applications to help you to maintain data. So if you have a business process that is very much uh, data driven and you want to build a form and a report to maintain this data, it is trivial to do it in Apex. It is also extremely simple to create applications that provide beautiful visualizations against your data. So if you know a little bit of SQL, you can flourish with Apex. So Apex is the right platform for you. So rather than you write down a lot of HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript to manipulate the data, you can do all natively by SQL. So Apex uh, is a no cost, fully supported feature included with every Oracle database, including of course the Oracle uh, Autonomous Database. And it's also part of the always free services. Okay, so now let's talk about the Oracle Apex Application Development Service, also known as the Apex Service. And um, this service is the fastest, lowest cost way to develop and deploy for class applications. So your Apex service can be ready in just a few minutes and you don't need to be an expert again uh, in, in database administration or uh, security or systems architecture. Oracle will take, will take care of all of it so you can concentrate on solving business problems or create the applications for your business. With the Apex service, you are going to get the, uh, the Oracle Apex, which is uh, a proven and effective platform 
for developing applications. You will get Oracle Autonomous Database and your applications will run on extra data hardware in the Oracle Cloud. If you want to learn more about the Apex service, you can go to apex.oracle.com. Okay, so let me see if my environment is now available. Okay, the Apex service is now available. Uh, and at this point, I'm going to give you some minutes uh, so you can sign up, for, sign up for a free trial account and also create the Apex service. I will give you five minutes and then I'm going to come back to continue with the lab number one, okay? Let us know in the chat or in the Q&A if you have any questions or about Apex or if you are facing any issues during the workshop, please uh, send us a, mention, a message in the chat, all right? Okay, so uh, if you prefer, I can show you again how to create the Apex service. Yes, um, okay, no worries, I can do it. Okay, so let's go back to the Oracle Cloud environment. And we need to navigate to developer services. Click on Apex instances. Okay, so make sure that you have selected the compartment here and click on create Apex service. Okay, so as I said before, we need to provide uh, some basic information. I'm going to enter uh, for this uh, workshop. I'm going to enter workshop number two. And I'm going to enable the always free option. So you can use this Apex service for unlimited time you will get one CPU and 20 gigas for storage. Then we need to enter the uh, administrative credentials. By default, the username is admin. So let's enter the password and navigate to uh, create Apex service button. That's all. So let's create this uh, service. It will take some minutes and then you will, re you will be ready to start working with the Apex service. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to move to the next step. Let me come back to the workshop. And okay, so I'm going to go to my Apex instance. Okay, so in order to run Apex, so click on Launch Apex once your Apex service is available. If it's not available yet, let's uh, give it one minute or so, and then you can click on Launch Apex. Okay, so we are going to see the administration, administration services. And then again, you need to enter, oops, this is not the password. So let me copy the password again. So when you provision your Apex service, you remember that you enter the password. So this is the password that you need to enter at this point. Again, the, uh, administ the username, was admin and now enter the password. Click on sign in to administration. And we need to create a workspace. In the workspaces is where we can create the applications and maintain the application. So we need to create the workspace for that, for database user, let's enter demo and the password and click create workspace.
okay? At the top of the page, you will find this message that the workspace was created. So you will need to sign out of the administration services to sign in to this new workspace. So click on them and let's enter the password. Okay, so this is the Apex environment. Uh, you will find the app builder where you can create the applications and also maintain your applications. It's a SQL workshop where you can um, um, maintain the database objects. You can run SQL commands. You can create SQL scripts. There are many utilities that you can use. Uh, also, you will find the team development where you can track the Apex projects in the gallery. And you will find uh, a sample application that you can install in your Apex environment. Okay, so at this point, we are ready to start working with the lab number one. Okay, and let me show you this, um, the object browser of this database. So we just create this autonomous database. We don't have any tables, views, uh, or any database objects. So we need to start from some point. And the easiest way to start creating the application is using a sample data set. So for that, we need to install a sample data set. And we are now at this point in the lab number one. Okay, so we need to install the customer and orders sample data set. So let me show you how to do it. And then I'm going to give you time so you can install the sample data set. So let's navigate to SQL Workshop, Utilities, Sample Data Set. And uh, this is the sample data, the sample data set that we are going to install. Click on install. Okay, so click next. And these are the tables and views that we are going to install with this data set. Install. Okay, so we have uh, some tables for customers, uh, for the products, uh, the orders, and some other views, okay? So we are going to click on exit. And that concludes basically the lab number one. Then you can move to the object browser if you want to see the, the tables that you just created. For example, if we go to the products, you will see uh, the columns and the data that we have for the products. Okay, so I'm going to give you five minutes so you can um, so you can run this lab, okay, and then I'm going to come back with the second lab. All right. Okay, so let me show you some few things um, in the workshop. Let's go here. Okay, um, so when you are um, creating the Apex workspace, you would find, um, let me scroll down a bit here. So when you are creating the Apex workspace, we are going, we are suggesting to enter a demo as database user, and the same for workspace name. And the password, this is the password that we, that we are uh, suggesting, but you can enter your own password, okay? So for database user and workspace name is demo. 
And that's the same that you are going to use to sign in to the um, workspace, okay? And there's another question about how to install the sample data set. So in, in order to install the sample data set, you need to go to the SQL workshop, navigate to utilities, and click on sample data sets. And uh, here I already installed this uh, sample data set, but probably if you haven't done yet, you will find the button install, click on install, and you can install this. Uh... Uh, okay, uh, so you need to sign in, you need to uh, sign out of the administration services and then sign in to the new a demo workspace. Okay, so let me show you how to do it really quick. Okay, so if you are in the administration services, Okay, so this is what you see. And when you create the Apex, the, the Apex workspace, you need to sign out. Probably after you create the workspace, you can see here at the top a message. So if you didn't see it, just click on sign out right here. And then return to sign in page and enter the name of the workspace, the username, and the password. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so let's move to the second lab. And let me show you the products table first. So as I show you in the application, basically this is a shop for um, clothing for different type of clothing. So in the products table, we have the ID of the product, the product name, the unit price, uh, some details in the JSON um, type, and the product image. So this is just a build-up, then you need to upload the image for the product. Okay, so what I want to show you is that we don't have any characteristic of the product. So we don't know if this is a, a, a t-shirt, if this is a dress or is this is a coat, we don't know that. So it will be nice that customers can uh, identify easily the type of products that they have, that we have in this shop. So that allows them to easily shop and easily uh, find the products that they are interested. So, what we are going to do is to add new uh, columns to this product. So we are going to create three new pro uh, columns. That is uh, the color. So we know uh, the color of the product, the department, if this uh, product is for boys, for women, or for men, and also the type of clothes. Okay, so we are going to create three new columns to the products table. And for that, you need to go to the SQL workshop, navigate to object browser, and navigate to the products table. Okay, so in order to create these uh, columns, navigate to the add column button, and let's start with the color column. This is a bar card and the length is 200. Click next and click finish. Okay, so now we have a new column right here. We can uh, move to the next column, which is, for example, department. This bar card, the length. 200 
And the last one is a uh, closing. Okay, so that is it. Uh, we have the new columns right here. If we go to the data, we have the columns, but we don't have any information about the products right here. So we need to populate these uh, new columns. And for that, we need to run this SQL script, okay? So this is the task number two. We are going to populate these uh, new columns. And for that, you need to use this uh, script. So basically, we are going to populate the columns using the information that we have in the JSON. So in this uh, product details uh, column, we have the information for the products. So we are going to get that information in order to run to populate these uh, columns, all right? So for that, we need to go to the SQL workshop, SQL scripts, and let's create a new SQL script. Let's enter the name of the script. Okay, for example, uh, populating the new columns. And if you go to the uh, workshop, you can copy the entire script. So click on copy and paste in the editor. Okay, so we are going to update the products table based base on the information that we have. So for the clothing, we are going to get uh, the type of clothing from the product name column. Um, for the color, we are going to use the product details uh, column. We are going to get uh, that information from there. Uh, this, is our, this is our JSON uh, column. So we are going to get the information from uh, the product details. Okay, so this is what we need. And uh, in order to run this script, click on run button. Okay, so we have only one statement. Click on run now. Okay, so we have updated 46 rows. We don't have any errors. Everything was perfect. So we can come back to the object browser, navigate to the products, and let's see the data. Okay, so now we have information for the color, the department, and the clothing, right? So let me see, we have a query here that we also we can run. Let's use the SQL commands. Okay, so we have the product name, the unit price, the color, department, and clothing. Perfect. But uh, there is something that is, we are here. We have the description of the color, for example, and I can see that the color is repeated. So we have red, blue, red, right? So this is not good. Also, we have uh, repeated information for the department and the clothing, okay? So we need to normalize this data. And for that, we are going to create a lookup table. So instead of having here the description for the color or the department or the clothing, we are going to get, uh, we are going to have the, the key or the ID to the right uh, value. And for that, we need to create a new table to have all of these values. So um, then we can have the reference to that value, okay? So what we are, but we are not going to create these tables from scratch. Apex has an option. So let me show you. If we go to the products, uh, Apex has this amazing option that you can create a lookup table from one of the columns that you have here. For example, so we can create a lookup table for the color, 
Let's click on create lookup table, select the column, and then Apex is going to create a table for you and a new sequence. Okay, so you need, you can enter uh, the table name or the sequence, I'm going to leave it as default and click next. Okay, so this is what we are going to create and then hit on create lookup table. So what Apex did is uh, to create the lookup table, in this case for the color. If we navigate to the data, we can see all the values for uh, the color, okay? And if we go to the products, now instead of having this a uh, column as a bar card, we have a number. And if we go to see the data, we have the reference to the value in the color lookup table, okay? So now we don't have, so this is perfect because uh, when administrators need um, to update information or we need to uh, create a new product, they can select uh, the color from a select list. They don't need to enter the color manually, right? So we need to do the same for department and the clothes. So let's go to the table. And click on create lookup table. Select department. And create the lookup. Let's go back to the products. And let's create the final lookup table for the clothing. Okay, so if we see the data in the clothing lookup, we have the coat, the shorts, uh, jeans, uh, the jacket, okay? So again, it is better to have the data normalized that we have several information repeated and also that allows that uh, when administrators enter data for one product, they can enter anything. They can enter, uh, I don't know, uppercase, lowercase, and in this way, we can set the select list that they are going to use to enter the details for the product. So we can provide a select list for the color, a select list for the department, and a select list for the clothing. Okay, so that concludes the lab number two. And I'm going to give you uh, some minutes so you can um, run all of these steps. Awesome job, everyone. So we can uh, continue with the lab number three, which is uh, creating a database package for the business logic. So uh, as I show you in the application, uh, the customers can add products to the cart, they can remove products, they can clear the shopping cart, or they can proceed to check out. So we need to create a database object, sorry, a database package to uh, handle all of these process, procedures and functions that we have, okay? So uh, basically, uh, we are going to use the Apex Collation API to um, manage all of the products that customers uh, upload or enter to the shopping cart. So using the Apex collation, we are going to save temporarily these products. So instead of using a real table, we are going to use the Apex collation. So during the specific session of the user, they can access uh, the products, they can manipulate the products, or they can process the information, okay? So this uh, collection is only available during the specific session of the user and anyone else can see <clears throat> the data that, or in this case, the products 
that uh, customers are uploaded to the collection. Okay, so let me show you the package. <clears throat> okay, okay, great. So let me show you the package that we are going to create. Uh, this package is the manage orders. Um, so basically, we have some procedures to add the product temporarily to the collection. Uh, to remove the product from the collection, or uh, also we need to know how many items they have in the shopping cart. Uh, we also know, have to know if the product already exists in the shopping cart. Uh, we have a procedure to clear the cart or uh, another function to validate if the customer already exists or not. And uh, the last procedure is to create the order, okay? So we need to move the products in the collection to the order items table, okay? So if we review in detail this uh, procedure, for example, the add product, we can see that we are using the collection. In this case, the collection, the name of the collection is products. So the first thing that we need to do is to validate if the collection already exists or not. If the collection doesn't exist, we need to create one, okay? And then we need to um, insert the information that uh, for this product. For example, if the customer is uh, adding, uh, I don't know, a t-shirt uh, from the shop, we need to enter the ID of the product and the quantity, okay? So this is very important. We need to know the name of the collection, okay? So you, need, you can explore the other procedure that we have here in the package to get the quantity, okay? To know, to clear the card. So if, for example, to clear the card, we validate that the collection exists, if the collection exists, we just uh, truncate the collection and that's all. So with that, we can remove all the products from the collection, okay? So in order to create uh, this package, we need to go to the object browser. And at the right, you will find this button, the uh, plus sign. So hit on that and navigate to package. Okay, so we need to create the specification for this package. Let's enter the name of this package. And let's copy the specification from the workshop. Okay, so let's copy that and <clears throat> I'm going to remove everything <clears throat> and paste uh, the specification in the edit. Okay, <clears throat> now click on create package specification. And at this point, we need to enter the body section of the uh, package. Okay, so let's scroll down in the workshop and you will find the package file. Let's copy that. Clear the editor and paste the body of the package. Click on save and compile. Okay, so now you can use all of these uh, procedures and functions in your Apex application, okay? The next step is to create the application. So I'm going to give you some minutes so you can create the database object and, <clears throat> sorry, the database package, and then we can continue with the next step. So let me know if you prefer to have some, some minutes to conclude the lab number three of your talk. Okay, some people, is working on the lab number four. Okay, that's great.
Awesome. So let's move to the next step. Uh, so we are going to start the lab number four, which is creating the application. Okay, so we need, uh, so we are ready uh, with the sample data set. We are ready to create uh, the business logic with the package. So we are ready to start uh, creating the application. And for that, we need to go to the app builder, click on create a new application. Click on new application. Okay, so the name for this application is Agne Shop. And um, the first thing that we are going to do is to add one page for uh, the dashboard. So administrators can see um, useful information about the shop, for example, uh, the top 10 of the products, uh, the top five of the stores and more information, okay? So in the app page, we uh, hit on dashboard. So we are going to create four charts here. And the first chart is a bar, okay? So select the bar. And the name of this uh, chart is top 10 products. And the table is for view, in this case it's a view, product orders. The type is the sum and the value is uh, the total sets. Okay, so now let's select the chart number two. Okay, so for this chart, we are going to use the pie and the name is the top five stores. The table or view is the store orders. Okay, the label is the store name. The type is the sum, and we are going to uh, select for value the total sales. For chart number three, we are going to use a buy again, and the chart name is the order status. And the table, table or view that we are going to use is uh, the customer order products, okay? Uh, the type is the count and the value, the ID of the order. Now let's uh, go to the chart number four and select a bar. The name of this chart is product reviews. The table of view is the product reviews. Okay, and the label is the product name. The type is the column value in and the value is the average rating. Okay, so before that you add the page to the application, scroll down to advanced. So we need to set this uh, page as administration page because this information is not important or is not useful for the customer. It's only useful for administrators. So we want to set this page as administration, okay? Now we can add the page to the application. Well, let's see what happened in chart number one. Okay, all right. Uh, chart number one, the label is the product name. Okay, let's check the chart number three. 
the label is the order status. Okay. Now let's add the page, right? And the next step is to add the products page. So for the products page, we are going to use a face research. Okay. So the name of this page is uh, the products. We are going to use the cards and the table is the products. Okay. We are going to use the grid. The title uh, of the column is the product name for body column. I'm going to unselect the option here. And uh, the next step is to scroll down the advanced section. And we are going to use this page as the home page for the application. So click on set as home application and add the page. Okay, by default, Apex always adds uh, this home page to the applications. So as we can remove this original home page from the application. So we can go to edit and delete this uh, home page. Okay, so we have the home page, we have one page for the administrators, and then we can add some reports to maintain the data, okay? So let's click on add page. Let's um, expand the additional pages and click on multiple reports. So we are going to create a number of pages here for uh, the closing, the call lot, the customer, the department, the product reviews, and the stores. So the only thing that we need to do is to select or check these uh, tables, okay? So we have the clothing, the color, right? The customers, uh, the department, the product reviews, and the stores, okay? So we have six tables here. And let's add all of these pages to the application. Okay, so those pages are not accessible to the customers, are only accessible to the administrators. For that, we need to edit these pages, the six uh, pages, and set uh, these pages as administration page. Okay, so go to, the, to these pages, expand the advanced, and check set as administration page, save changes. And do the same for the six uh, pages that you just created. Okay, so also you can validate that you have set all the pages as administration. You can see here that this is an administration page, this is the home page, so you can verify that. Okay. Okay, uh, so the next uh, page that we are going to add is the page that allows administrators to manage the products. So let's add this interactive report. Um, the name of this page is the Manage Products. The table is the products. We are going to include a form, so check the option and expand the lookup columns. Okay, so we have the lookup columns that we create in the previous labs, okay? So we have the clothing ID and what we are going to display to the, uh, to the user. So instead of displaying the ID, we are going to display the description of the clothing. So select uh, the clothing, uh, do the same for department, 
and the color ID. Okay, so this is the, uh, the lookup key one. We are going to uh, select the ID of the uh, lookups and for display, you will select the description, okay? So this is what uh, users are going to see. And don't forget to expand the advanced option or section, sorry, to check the set, um, set this page as an administration page. Click on add page, okay? And uh, we are ready with the patients. Now the next step is to check the access control because we want uh, to validate the user that is running the app. Okay, so because we are going to have the, but the majority of the app will be public access, but there are some other pages that requires authentication. And for that, the only uh, users that can run the uh, administration are the administrators. So we are going to validate the role of these users. So check the access control and for the settings, we are going to leave it as default and click on create the application. Okay, so once the application is ready, we can run it and we can see some few things. We are going, you are going to see uh, how to manage the clothing, how to manage the color, how to run the dashboard, and other um, information that you that we just create. Okay, so the application is now ready, and we can run it. At this point, we need to enter the credentials. Maybe look for the password. Okay, so we have the face research. We can uh, filter the, the products, but we don't have the image for these uh, products. We can upload that. Uh, we can select, for example, uh, the department or the type of clothing, or we can clear the information here, okay? So let's see other options in the application. If we go to administration, you can see uh, the dashboard, okay? If you remember at the beginning, I show you the final application, you can see the dashboard, uh, the status of the orders, the product reviews, and all of that. Also, you can manage the products. So at this point, the administrators can go to their products and upload an image, or they can select a different option for the color department or the, the clothing, okay? So I'm going to show you how to upload an image for uh, the products. So you can go to, let me show you again. In the navigation menu, you will find the administration, click on that and then navigate to manage products. Select one of the products and if for the product image, select the product. Okay, so let me go to the images. Okay, so we have here uh, the, code, the code blue. Okay, so this is the image for this product apply the changes, and we can do the same for others. I'm going to do only for the codes, okay? You don't need to do the same for all the images. You just uh, can do it for some of the products. Okay, let's add another one. So this is the girl code. Blue. Oops, sorry. Now the man. And the last one.
Okay. So if we come back to the shop, let's check uh, the code. We need to work in this page in order to display the image that we just uploaded. And we are going to do that in the lab number eight. So we are going to improve the products page so customers can see the image that you just uploaded. Okay, so I'm going to give you some minutes so you can create the application and let me know if you have any questions or if you are facing any issue during the workshop so I can help you. And also uh, Jason can help you with uh, your questions, all right? <clears throat> so let me show you how you can download the images. So at the beginning, uh, I show you the downloads section. If you go to the introduction, let's scroll down and you will find this uh, downloads section. You can download the entire application or you can download the images for this application, okay? So you can download some images. You need to upload all the images for the products. You can upload some of them, for example, five, six, that works. And um, you can move on to the next lab. Okay, so I think we are ready to uh, work with the, start the lab number five. And here we are going to create the order page. So this is the page where customers uh, can see the details of the order. So after the, the checkout, they can see the details, for example, uh, the status of the order, the total, the products. So this is basically what we're going to create, okay? So let's get started creating a normal page. So let me show you how to do it. And now, so we are here at this point. And we can create the page. So if you are probably the ID of your uh, application can be different. In my case, the application ID is 100. And um, that means that I am in the home of the outlet, on the, sorry, in the home of the application. So we can go to create the page. So you can find here the button to create the page. Okay, so we are going to create a blank page. So in this lab, you are going to learn how to add uh, some components to the page, how to add a region, how to add a button, how to add items manually. So because not every time we can create a page using the wizard. Sometimes we need to create uh, a page from scratch. So you can learn how to do it in this lab. So we are going to select the blank page. And now we need to enter the ID for this page. This is the ID, uh, the page number uh, 16. And the name of this page is order information. This is a normal page, okay? We are not going to use any breadcrumb, so we can click next. And also this page is not going to be available in the navigation menu, so we can skip that, click next, and click finish to create the page. So, we need to add some regions to this page. So let's get started creating a, a region to display the order details, okay? So for that, first, let me uh, explain the page designer. And in the page designer, you can find three different panes. The, in the first pane, uh, you will find the rendering tree. So you can see all the components that you have in your page. Also, you can see the dynamic actions, the processing, and the shared components that you are using in this page. 
In the mirror pane, you will find the layout, which is a representation of the page when you run it. And at the bottom, you will find the gallery menu. So if you want to add a region, an item, or a button to this page, you can just drag and drop the uh, component to the page. And the last pane is the property editor. So if you select one component, for example, a region, an item, or a button, you can change uh, the properties for this component in a declarative way. So you can find a number of properties, uh, properties here, and you can uh, define different uh, options for the properties. Okay, so having said that, the first thing is uh, we need to create a static content region. So you will find here in the gallery menu, the static content. So I'm going to drag this uh, region to the content body. Okay, so let's see it here. And in the property editor, we need to enter some information. For example, the title of this uh, region, uh, the template and the template options. So for title, we are go I'm going to copy the title okay, from the workshop. So the title is, thank you for your order. The type is, is a static content. And now for template, I'm going to show you something here. So if you go to the filter and you enter sample template, you can easily find the property that you are looking for. So let's enter template. And for the template, we are going to select content block. Okay. And in the template options, click on this option and let's select check the show region icon. That's all. Click OK and we are ready. So we just create a region. We don't have too much here. At any time, you can save the page and run it. So we can save and run this page to see which, what we just create. We only have this message. Thank you for your order. We don't have anything else. So we need to start uh, working with uh, the next step. Uh, I think um, there's another property that we need to defined, which is enter the icon for the region. So let me look the icon. So we are going to select the far heart. Okay. Also, you can copy the icon, the, the name of the icon from the workshop. And we can run it again. Okay. So here is the icon. And we can continue with the next step. Perfect. So now we can move to the task number three. And in the, at this point, we are going to add some items to this page to store the ID of the order. Okay. So the, the customer is now able to see the ID, it's just for uh, administration purposes. Okay, so with that, we can go to the region and we can create, this is another way to add uh, an item uh, to the page. So you can use, you can go to the right click to the region and select create page item. Okay, so the name of this item is the existing, underscore order, and the type of this item is hidden. Okay. Now, the next step, let me go here, is to add another static content region. So in this region, we are going to uh, uh, display the details for the order and the items. Okay, so we are going to create a sub region. Okay, so navigate to the thank you for your order region, right click 
and create a subregion. Okay, so we have here another region. Okay, and we need to enter the title for this uh, region. So basically, we are going to show the order, and you can show, you can see that we are adding an upper sun and a dot at this in this um, item. So it's because we want to display the ID of the order, okay? For example, let me go to the application. Let's see if I can show you this. Okay, let's do it easily. After the shopping cart, after the checkout. So this is what we are working here. The title of this static content region. So we have the order and this is the ID of the order. So we need to include the ampersand and the dot uh, in order to display the ID, the content of this um, item. Okay. Okay. So this is a static content. And then uh, we can add uh, more uh, uh, other region to this page. So we are going to add a subregion. To the, so navigate again to the order uh, region, click on, right click and create a subregion. All right, so we need uh, to set some properties here and the name of this uh, region is order details. The that, oops, sorry. The type of this region is a cars region, okay? And we can copy the SQL query from the, short, the, from the workshop. Okay, so here are the SQL query. You can copy the SQL query. Basically, we are going to use the order ID, the date of the order, the ID of the customer, the status, the store ID. Uh, also, we need to know the total of these purchase. And this is very important because uh, we need to know what is the ID of this order. So that's why we are getting this information from the shopping cart page. So you remember you got the shopping cart page and then uh, it, um, this page moved directs you to the order information. So we are getting this ID from the shopping cart. Okay, so we need to uh, define that we are going to use the source for this uh, cart region, it's a SQL query. And let's enter the query right here. We can validate the SQL query. Okay, let's Great. And now we can navigate to the attributes to define some other properties here. Okay. So navigate to um, secondary body and enable the advanced formatting. And we need to copy, let's copy. This uh, sorry, HTML expression from the workshop. Okay, so let's copy this and let's enter right here in the HTML expression. Okay, so we have uh, the order place, the date, the status, and the total. Okay, so click OK. And at this point, you can save and run the page also. Of course, you can see anything because we don't have an ID of the order. We need to have 
an ID for this order in order to display the information for the order. And the last step is to add some items to the region, okay? So we need to create another subregion. So navigate to the order uh, region and let's create a subregion. And the, in this region, we are going to show the items, okay? Again, this is going to be a CARF region. And we have a SQL query to display the information. So we have the name of the product, the unit price, the quantity, the subtotal, the image of the product. So let's copy this SQL query. And the type of the source of this uh, region is a SQL query. Let's expand the editor, validate the SQL query, click OK. And then we can move to the attributes right here. And for the title, For title, we are going to select the product. For the secondary body, we are going to um, enable the advanced formatting. Okay, so we can enter this HTML expression. All right, so let me show you here. Okay, so we can copy this HTML expression. You can expand the editor. Okay, so we have the quantity and the unit price. Okay, and now let me go to under, let's see what it says. Okay, right here. Navigate to the media and we can display the image of the product. Okay, so for the source, we are going to use the below column. And the below column is the product image. Okay, so for the position is the body, uh, appearance is auto, and the sizing is fit. Okay, um, since we are using this below column, we need to provide the primary key, primary key column for uh, this um, for this region. Okay, so we need to select the item which is having the ID of the product. Okay, so with that we are ready to run the page. So if I run the page, so of course we don't have any data because we don't have the ID of the order. So uh, we need to have, we need to create a shopping cart in order to see all of these uh, images uh, for the order and the details for the order to see everything. Uh, uh, we have some events, the uh, office hours for Apex. So tomorrow we have the Apex 21.2 new features. This is the second part of the new features in this version. So please, please don't, um, uh, don't miss this uh, session. And also on November 18, we have another session about the vanity URLs. And on December, we have another session about the flows for Apex 21.1. Okay, so now Tara, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so we do have some additional resources here um, that we'd like to share with you. Um, the first is we have another developer webcast on December 2nd, and that will be on um, an AI crash course on how to incorporate machine learning models into apps. Um, and then we just have our lab guide and live lab again. Um, we also encourage you to share with us any feedback that you have on today's session or on what you'd like to see from us going forward and then to contact us at that email with any questions that you have on the lab. 
And then lastly, as Monica just mentioned, that is our main APEX office hours page with the, the upcoming events. Um, and uh, you can join developers and product managers for trainings and how to's every month on how to make the most of the tool. And then on the next slide, this one is on the badge that I mentioned a little bit earlier. So we'd like to test your knowledge on what you learned today. And by completing several questions of the lab quiz correctly, you'll achieve a developer pioneer badge that you can share on your social media. And then lastly, on our final slide, We'd like to let you know that Oracle University is now offering free access to OCI training, including free certification exams through December 31st of this year. So be sure to check that out. And I just dropped all of those links in the chat. And that concludes our slides for today, I believe. Um, I'll give everyone a second to add any final questions in the Q&A. All right, uh, if there are no more questions, I'd like to thank Monica again for this great presentation, everyone for their help, and thank you all for spending your time here with us. The recording, again, will be available on the Masterclass event page, and it'll also be sent to your email that you use to register for the event within the next couple of days. So with that, I'll go ahead and end today's session. Have a great day, and we hope to see you again next time.